When building a software company, there's nothing more important than shipping and iterating. Today, I'm gonna to run you through Clipflow and show you some user feedback that we've just received. Pick apart what's priority and walk away for later. We use the exact same core principles when building our company Realbase, which we sold two years ago for a crispy 180. So let's jump in. All right, so someone's kindly spent a bit of time going through Clipflow and checking out the features and basically giving us a run through of what their process is, which is highly valuable and we really appreciate it. So thank you so much. There's a whole bunch here and I'll show you how we step through this and actually see what we can grab as quick wins so that it makes it feel like the people are getting what they need. And also the bigger pieces, the bigger work items that we could put in the roadmap that we need to think about and how we implement those. So let's walk through these and I'll show you how we go. So we have a user who's tested out of the platform and given us a whole bunch of feedback, which is awesome and greatly appreciated. And this is what it's all about, right? So you ship your first thing, get people using it, and then we can go through here now, have the discussion and see what things they'd like to see in the product, what things work for them, what things don't, and what would be the a better um, outcome. Now, obviously, every user will have their own opinion because it'll be their workflow. And we have to build a product that caters to a lot of people. We can't just have it catering to one person. So what we have to do here is look for things that can be made generic. And we have to think about how can we build this in software so that it's either customizable or it is generic enough so that you can make it do whatever you need to do. So other tools in the space are very generic, which means they allow you to build whatever you need, but obviously that adds complexity. So we wanna keep things simple. So to do that, we need to just make sure that it's very hyper-focused and there is a little bit of room for customization. So what I've done here is I've gone through the whole email that we, got, we received and I've just broken it into pieces. So the thoughts and ideas and categorize them, I guess you could say, and just so it allows us to kind of focus on one piece at a time because otherwise it can be a bit overwhelming if you just look at this wall and you go like, whoa, what's happening? So whenever I get feedback, I like to try and break it down into little pieces so that we can work through each piece and see how we could implement those pieces. Sometimes those pieces are a little bit interconnected, so we work through that as well. So the first piece here is around scripting, all right? So this is very important and something that I'm still learning. It's important when building a really good video or story or anything that you wanna grab a user's attention, right? So you, you hear about people talking about hooks and things like that, but with YouTube, it's very important to have some sort of story so that the user can get involved and wanna find out what happens at the end. So over here, we've got the user saying, obviously YouTube has a big focus on storytelling and they'd like to be able to add a script with a specific structure. So this is cool to me because I'm not really familiar with storytelling structure. So I just did some research on like save the cat, fray tags, permit hero's journey, etc. And then when you select that structure, the note screen that we have in Clipflow. So if you have a look at this screen here, that will pre-populate with basically the headings and a little bit of text to say like what you need to put in here, right? So we could say like, we wanna use the save the cat structure and bang, that'll fill that all in there for you, okay? So that's a, that's a really cool idea. And then he's also said here, when writing a script, it's often overlooked to designate the audio, visuals, and graphics. And this is really important when you're working with a team or even if you're by yourself so that you can step through, you know, when I'm talking about this, I want this audio and I want, I want this graphic to show up over here, right? So it's, it's about arranging your, your structure so that when your editor follows it as well, or you, could be you, it's clear that what your intent was at that time. All right, so he's kindly provided this example here from THMS film and TV. So you can see here, so we have three columns. We have video, audio, and graphic. So here's what was being filmed or what you should film or you want to film. Here's the audio that will be playing. So it could be a soundtrack. It could be some commentary over the top and then the graphics that you're gonna use, right? So you could say here, and this is very cool. This is, this is a really killer feature that I definitely think we'll be adding into Clipflow because it makes heaps of sense. It even makes sense for me right now, I like to make this video. It'd be awesome if I could have each step here and then what audio, what graphics, right? It just makes the, the whole clip way more interesting. So overall, this one here is about scripts, formatting, like script format or storytelling structure, and also this, this three column scripting, which is a really cool feature. So the way I'd look at this now, when we're actually going to implement, I would, I would first need to go research how these structures look and work, and can you easily convert them into a text-based structure in a note section or something that you can work with? I'm gonna say, 
Most likely, yes, I think so, because most scripts are written. So I think that will work perfectly in Clipflow and probably something that we could add relatively easy. Something that would probably be a negative here is we'd add pre-built scripts for sure, and then it's not gonna fit some people. So what we would have to have here is eventually is probably a phase two where a user can create their own scripts, right? They would say like, this is my script. I've got my own structure. You know, you might do a specific, you might be doing review videos or something and you have a very specific structure you wanna follow. So you need to be able to create that so that it preloads for you, right? So that's that feature there. And the second feature for me looks and feels like a whole new page because you want, really wanna be able to focus on this. So you'd wanna be able to write these things, add rows, because the way we're working is in time. So we can imagine starting at minute zero and working down. And then you're gonna have each thing that comes across here, right? And you're gonna designate time even. I would even say there's some sort of timing here because in YouTube, for instance, you wanna hook someone within three to five seconds, right? So you could have like even break on down on the left, possibly like hook, and then you could break down into actual sections that you wanna go through, right? And then you know, you have your call to action in here and then your second call to action. So I think this is really awesome and this is a big piece of work, but definitely something that I think is highly valuable. All right, great. So that's great feedback. Right there is nothing that I would object to. I would say like in this initial phase of Clipflow, this makes perfect sense. We have spoken about this. So I'd move, I'd chuck those on, the, on our board and start working on them, all right? So from there, what we'll do here is we'll go and I'll sit with Daryl and we'll work through how we wanna see this. How, do, how does this work? How does this fit into Clipflow? What does it look like? Importantly, where does it sit on the page, okay? So moving on, we've got the channel category. Now this is um, very important in YouTube. So in general, in YouTube, we have entertainment and education. Those are the two main. And then you have the overlapping edutainment. So where you're, in, you're educating people, but you're entertaining them at the same time, right? So this is a very good piece of feedback. When he creates a channel, he wants to be able to set what type of channel it is, entertainment, edutainment, or education. And then from there, we can build out the structure of the project depending on that. So if you've chosen entertainment and you would most likely build thumbnails that are a bit more fun, a bit more exciting. Whereas if you're doing education, you wanna show like the outcome. What am I gonna learn when I watch this video? Okay, that's a great piece of feedback. That's relatively simple to implement the category. So that's the first step what we would do is we'd add the category as more it's just gonna be acting as a tag in the beginning. But then from there, we can use that category to determine what to show, what not to show, in the project itself. So that's a tick, That'll ch we'll chuck that one on the board. Okay, moving down. So the next concept here that I've, we've labeled is swipe files and ideas. So in Clipflow we have ideas, right? So we have just a text idea and then you can write a bit of a description. So what this is um, building on top of is saying he'd like to add the URL of the YouTube video to create the idea from. And then possibly a bunch of titles, inspiration. So if you've seen a really cool thumbnail you wanna do, you wanna chuck that in there too. You're like, I like this thumbnail, or this thumbnail actually spurs an idea for me, right? So a lot of creators actually start from the thumbnail and work from there. A good story that you found, and then so you can chuck that all into the ideas pile, and then you can use those ideas to create your project. So this is, again, relatively simple, so easy to implement. And, and I think it makes sense, right? Like if you've seen, you wanna create an idea from another video you've seen, which happens a lot. You see a video, you wanna do some feedback on it. You wanna do a review of someone else's video. You'll see YouTube's are full of that. So this is a great idea. We'll chuck that one straight in. All right, so the next one is a title generator. So obviously a lot of apps are now adding in AI or using LLMs and GPT to generate content. This is something we actually spoke about about a week or two ago. And it's more, it's not so much about creating your title, it's more about iterating on it. So if you come up with a title or multiple titles, you could ask, you know, ChatGPT, can you please make this more formal? Can you make this more fun? Can you, you know, so it just helps you generate ideas. And I've even seen some creators while watching some videos, you know, they may be missing a word. And it's like, can you fill in this word here that I'm missing? Like, you may not know a great describing, like me right now, a great word to put in there. So you can just use the LLM to help give some suggestions and you can grab one from there. So this is a good feature suggestion. It is a bit more complex to implement because obviously you now have to do an integration. It's gonna cost money, which 
you probably want to do more so when you are actually generating a little bit of income not straight away i think there are a lot of tools that kind of do this already so for me this one i'd rank it a little bit lower due to complexity being higher and then i guess you want some more people there to actually you know make it worthwhile in the long run so it's a great idea it's definitely on our board but i'd, I'd prioritize it slightly lower just in the beginning all right so finally we have a comment which is very useful but it's just saying while clipflow is focused on youtube it is important not to overlook written content formats such as email newsletters medium articles podcasts which allow the same or follow the same process as creating a video they just stop short of the filming part now we totally agree with this i was even thinking about podcasts as one like you have to do all the same things you have to collect all the info you have to talk through your points if you do your hooks you have to do a cover sometimes you know if you're doing a podcast on youtube or maybe even spotify but I think here is for us, the most important piece is, is remaining focused. So in the, in the beginning of a project, we really need to stay focused to build one thing. It helps keep our messaging simpler. We can say Clipflow is a project management platform for YouTube, not it's a project management platform for writing because the problem is there's lots of things. That's exactly what other tools do, right? So we wanna really focus on YouTube. That allows us to you know, focus on very specific things for YouTube to make sure the tool is built for purpose, and that's the key. So for me, this is a, is a great comment, and we think that people could use this tool to do these other things, but that's not what we're gonna market or what we're gonna build for, right? So we will. It, it, if you can make it work, you can make it work. It's like people make tools work for other all the time, and that's awesome. But for us, we wanna focus on what we started out to do. Now, finally, I just wanna talk through a very important piece for us, or for me usually, is I'm a, I would say the opposite of a yes man, which is a no man. Don't even know if that's a thing. But I like to, in general, once you, we've got to a certain size, the first answer is always no for me, right? So it's gonna be like, do we need another feature? No, why is that? Because we have limited resources, right? When you're building a product at any size, at any business size, you always have resources and you use those resources. Now, when you get a whole bunch, you want, tends to happen is you start end up getting heaps and heaps of features and you really want to stay focused in your product because your product can be pulled in many directions now today you've seen me just say yes to a lot of things and the reason being is because we think these features make sense these set features are building up on what we already have and they are perfect examples of great features that would make sense in a product like this but as you go along you'll see th more and more things come through where you have to say no and it could be no for now like you're like, no, and then you wait a couple of months and see if it comes up again. If it keeps coming up, then you know this is actually a pain point and we should address it. But in general, we don't have that many resources. So we do have to pick our battles and pick what features we build first and what is gonna create the most bang for buck. So what I wanna show you here is, this is basically the decision-making quadrant that you would use when make, um, deciding what features to build in your platform. We have down the bottom here, we have business value. So let me just pull that across there. So you got business value, you got low business value, high business value, right? So this is things like we can charge for that. This is gonna be features that users are gonna find super useful. They're gonna make your product, okay? Then we have complexity. How easy is it to build? To how hard it is, I guess. Like how long is it gonna take as well? And then we have these quadrants, right? So something that's low complexity, but high business value, we like these. These are called quick wins. So this is where you can step in and say, hey, user, we've got your feedback, so awesome. We've we're gonna implement those straight away. You can make those, you're gonna say, that's gonna take some, an engineer a day or a couple of hours, it's gonna smash those out. It's not gonna affect, your product's not gonna create heaps of technical debt. We're gonna just lock those in. That's what you saw me do today. Most of those things are just easy, easy, quick wins. We're gonna smash them out and you're gonna get a really happy user on the other end. We have low complexity, but low business value. So if it's not really that valuable to the business, uh, it doesn't really matter on what the complexity is for me. I think we're just probably not gonna do that, right? Even if it's low complexity, but there's no value, why are we doing it, okay? Then we move up to this quadrant here. So it's low business value, but high complexity, right? And this is perfect label here, time sinks. I'm, I, most of the time we just disregard those. Why, why are we building really complex features that can take months to do for no value? That doesn't make any sense. Now, obviously this is a continuum. So you could be here, 
or you could be sitting closer to here or here. Now, anything near the super high complexity, you always want to question your question your task. There. If it's not going to provide an immense amount of value to the business, probably just chuck them, chuck them in the no pile. Now, finally, we have high complexity and high business value. All right. Now these, yeah, like they say, are the big bets. So you can see something that's way more complex to implement, but you know that when we do this, it's gonna provide a lot of value to our customers, right? And this is generally gonna create those little bit of a moat because most people it's, are gonna struggle to implement or actually execute on high complexity. Um, and if you can do it, and it's gonna provide a lot of value, it's something you do. So here they call them the big bets. So the way I usually structured this in bigger business was I would run a big bet. I'd run three to four big bets a year, but then at the same time, while we're iterating, we're busy doing quick wins here, all right? We're doing quick quick wins and letting the, the rest of the team just keep chugging along with those features, but we're doing some a couple of big bets here because they require a lot of resources and planning and you wanna make sure you're doing them right because you don't wanna do a high complexity task and then fail at the end, all right? So use these sparingly, the high, I should point with my mouse, the big bets here, we do a couple of those a year and the quick wins we iterate on fast. This is where we're getting the most value for our business, right? In the end of the day, that's what matters. How much value at, for, for, can our software provide to our business? Because that's why we're here, we're here to make money. So how do we make money? By providing a lot of value, because the value to the business means value to the customer, which means they're more willing to pay, which means they're more willing to pay more. And that's what we want. We don't want to be building things with low value because no one cares, all right? If there's another tool that offers the same uh, feature, possibly they just keep using that tool. If there's 20 tools doing the same thing, we definitely don't want to be looking at it because you're just, you're just adding a me too and you're going to do it poorly. All right, so that's a quick run through of how we take user feedback, we iterate on it. Now we're gonna go and set in, step in and actually implement these features. And then we're gonna get straight back to the user. So we're gonna, we're gonna go and spend our time punching out whatever we can. So it's probably gonna be two or three little things. And then we're gonna contact them back. And we're gonna say, hey, here are the features that you requested. Can you have a play? Is this what you thought? Can you give us some more feedback? And then we're gonna create the cycle, right? Because now we're creating the, the cycle of feedback and which is exactly where you wanna be. And this is, I'm super excited today because we actually have our first user giving us really good concrete feedback. They have a good channel. They're getting a lot of, they've got a lot of subscribers. So they, they know what they're talking about is what we want. So we want more of these people because the more of these people you have, the quicker you can iterate on your product and get to a place where it's actually really useful. Because obviously when we have an idea, we think it's useful and we actually had a problem. So that's, wasn't just an idea, it was actually a problem for my own channel, was trying to build and keep scheduling and planning content in a better way. So this way we can actually go now with a real user, which is now validating some of our ideas and thoughts, and now we can just work with them. And if you can keep building out features with this, these users, they become raving fans. So they're gonna love your product, they're gonna tell other people about your product, and they're gonna become a marketing engine in their own, right? And I've seen this happen before in the past when we've built other business. Um, and you, you really need these people on your side so that um, you know it's a win-win for everyone. They're winning because they're getting what they want. You're winning because they're helping you build a better product. And they're also then going out and telling everyone else about the product. So hopefully that one was useful. We wanna try and do a few more videos that are a bit more like this, leaning into the business end because now we are into the business end. Building software is awesome, but in the end of the day, we wanna make money. That's why we do it. Um, it's really fun to build, but it's even more fun when you actually have users that are paying for your product, finding value, and you can keep iterating and building something bigger and better. So we'll catch you on the next one, guys. If you haven't checked out Clipflow, please do. Even if you're not a YouTuber, check it out, see how it feels. We still wanna know from other people how the UX, UI feels, how the app responds. So if you're a dev and you still wanna check it out, please do. And if you give us any feedback, that would be awesome. And don't forget to watch our other video as well where we actually run through why we built Clipflow. I think that's really important. So have a look at that and I'll catch you on the next one.